requirements. Yes, uh, you need a lot of RAM for um, running the SPAR cluster because it does a lot of in-memory uh, processing. Though it is uh, optimized for on disk processing as well, but uh, the uh, power and the speed you get by uh, storing RDDs uh, into uh, the memory. Uh, so uh, you need a lot of memory. Typically, uh, the requirement uh, is uh, you know you need uh, uh, machines, uh, worker machines around uh, uh, 64 GB RAM, you know, and upwards. Uh, so these are the kind of um, uh, machines uh, that you have that, that you need to have, and then uh, uh, octa-core uh, 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 processors are uh, recommended so that you can multitask, you can run multiple tasks on a given uh, the machine. Okay, is there any online training provided for uh, professionals? Uh, no, at this point uh, uh, we uh, don't have uh, the online trainings. We do only uh, the classroom uh, uh, trainings uh, at this point. As I said, we have uh, a classroom training scheduled uh, from uh, December 8 to 12 in uh, Bangalore. Um, uh, so you can, for more details, you can get in touch with uh, uh, Anurag. So, so what is the best language uh, um, for uh, writing the Spark uh, API? So Spark provides um, Java, Python, and uh, Scala, and uh, it supports uh, the functional uh, programming. And uh, the naturally suited languages are the Scala and uh, uh, Python. Of course, uh, it supports Java as well, but um, you should uh, understand the, the functional programming paradigm uh, uh, well to um, uh, to write programs uh, in um, uh, Java. So it supports all these uh, languages and it depends on your preference what language you want to, but there's nothing like uh, this is the best language uh, because it's a